Hello everybody, and welcome back to Disney News Channel. Today, I'm going to do a complete ranking of all the Disney live-action remakes. Let's get started with Peter Pan and Wendy, which will go and destroy it. This movie completely misses the point of the original animated version and completely lacks the creativity and fun aspect of Neverland. I also believe that the whole growing up uh, theme is, is messed up because instead of simply needing to grow up and move over the nursery, she's instead forced to grow up and go to boarding school, which I, I think is asking a little too much. But anywho, Let's carry on with Cruella. We'll put that in Love It. Cruella is my favorite live action remake I've seen, since instead of trying to retell the original, <coughs> instead it's doing, its, doing a completely original story that has almost nothing to do with the original story except using the same characters specifically Cruella, and giving her an origin story, and we get to learn why she's evil. And I have to say, there are some really, really powerful scenes in here, like the whole opening where she feels like she doesn't fit in with anybody, or, the, uh, or later on in the movie where we find out that the Baron is actually Cruella's father. I mean, the Baron is actually Cruella's mother. Now, next, let's talk about, let's talk about Pinocchio next. This is one of the worst live action remakes I have ever seen. For some reason, throughout the movie, they do the, these dumb rhyming lines that just, are just so freaking cringy. And the set design is, is incredibly cheap looking. Especially Pinocchio, who almost looks possessed at some points. And yeah, that's why it's one of my least favorites. Alright, now let's talk about... <clears throat> let's talk about Lil Mermaid. Uh, first off, this has some amazing VFX. Absolutely breathtaking. And, so, uh... One of the new songs, uh, Wild Uncharted, Uncharted Waters, for, uh, for Prince Eric, is an absolutely amazing song that I feel fits in very nicely with the original soundtrack. And I cannot get that song out of my head for the life of me. And, uh, of course, um, it is a, you know, an exact copy, but I'm at least impressed that they at least made some of the uh, transitional scenes a little different. Now let's take... Mm, we'll take Lion King. We'll put that in between Peter Pan and Wendy. This is an absolutely horrible, disgusting movie with the most lifelike CGI, which makes the movie all the worse for it. The story is literally an exact copy with no different transitional scenes or anything. And honestly, with the CGI, I every time I'm, I watch this movie, I think I'm losing my mind when I'm starting to when I'm starting to have feelings for these characters. Also, with every character in these live action remakes Get, uh, getting a, a song from Alan Menken. Um, for some reason, this is the one uh, movie that doesn't have a, a, a love song for the for the other person. Instead, it's just Nala singing "Oh Yeah" over a montage of them returning to the Pride Lands. Now, 
we'll talk about let's talk about Cinderella next. I think this is a good live action remake. Um, the animated portion is an absolutely horrendous movie that I don't even really want to rewatch. But I like in this movie how the prince and Cinderella have a little more chemistry and it's not like they just meet and then they get married. Instead, you know, they take their time with it and you could actually start to... I was actually starting to buy the relationship between the two of them. However, the one thing I need, need to... The one thing I don't like about it is that Cinderella is still the same damsel in distress from the original, where she's basically just held captive as a prisoner and does nothing about it. However, I do have to give this movie props for ditching those annoying side characters, uh, the mice, from the original version. So I think we're going to leave it there, I'm good. Anywho, next let's talk about... Um, let's do... Here we are. Okay, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. Uh, I absolutely love this movie. I think it's great that they focused a little more on... <coughs> on, uh, what's her name? Uh, Aurora. Yeah, Aurora and, uh, and the prince's uh, relationship in this movie. Although... I am a little disappointed it didn't have a bigger payoff. However, the stuff with Maleficent was pretty good, and the stuff with the Queen, as the villain, was absolutely phenomenal, had me on the edge of my seat. Now let's talk about, let's see if we're going to knock down some of these nostalgic and acceptable ones. Let's talk about the Jungle Book. We'll just put that there, in nostalgic. Um, don't really remember too much about this movie, which is weird because I just watched it like a couple of days ago. But I don't know, I feel like this movie just didn't really do anything to fully grab my attention. Um, I thought that was kind of weird how they cut out a lot of the songs from uh, from the original, and shortened, uh, I Wanna Be Like You substantially from, uh, the animated version. Now, let's talk about Beauty and the Beast. That can go in acceptable. Um, I'd say this is a fine live-action remake. Um, some of the songs are pretty good. I absolutely despise Emma Watson as Belle. And the CGI on the Beast is absolutely disgusting. And I feel like a lot of the magic is kind of... A lot of the magic and the romance is... Kind of gone from the original. And honestly, this feels more like Stockholm Syndrome now. Now we will talk about... Peach Dragon. I'll put this right next to Jungle Book. Um, I, I really liked uh, the opening and the beginning and the middle. I mean, not the beginning and the middle, the beginning and the ending. Uh, I feel like the middle was a little slow, and I wish they would have... Uh, I wish they would have given us more information about um, Pete and the dragon's uh, relationship, and Pete's uh, relationship with his new family. Especially since in the ending, the one of the little girl basically calls Pete his brother, and I feel like that would have hit a lot harder if they gave that relationship a little more focus. Now let's talk about let's talk about Mulan. I think we can put that right there, in between Peter Pan and Wendy, and uh, I mean, in between the Lion King and Pinocchio. Um, this is just a really weird movie for me. 
since um I have to, first off I really don't like the actress who plays uh, Milan. I feel like she's way too um she wants to like she's just I don't know how to describe her. She's she's just very loud spoken, I guess. And honestly, the stuff at the beginning with her family it has almost no payoff at the end. And they, uh, to be honest, a lot of the great stuff from the original, like the song Reflection, or the scene in the Cherry Garden, where her dad tells her that she's, uh, she's like a flower that needs a little more time, but it's going to be the most beautiful thing ever. I thought those were two amazing scenes from the original animated version <coughs> that they decided to cut here for some reason and honestly that's basically the biggest sin against this movie is that it just takes all of the stuff that made Mulan, not one of my favorites but I thought it was pretty good to be one of the worst uh, live action remakes. Now. Let's talk about Lee and the Tramp. We'll put that behind Beauty and the Beast. Um, I feel this movie was not bad, not great, but at the same time, I feel there were some really cheesy lines and the relationship between uh, Lady and the Tramp wasn't exactly flushed out as much as I would have liked it to. I especially would have liked to see more of this movie from the Tramp's perspective. Now let's talk about... Let's talk about... Um, Elephant. We'll put that right behind Cinderella. Uh, I thought this movie was pretty darn good. Uh, I loved how, uh, you know, Aurora was a little less of a damsel in distress, and uh, Melissa Finn and um, Aurora's relationship was absolutely adorable, including the fact that Aurora basically called Melissa Finn her fairy godmother. And, you know, the prince was a little more relevant in this movie, but I feel like they did a much better job at that in uh, the sequel, Most of it, Mistress of Evil, but yeah, I think this one is pretty good. Anywho, let's finish this off here, we got two more to go, so let's talk about Aladdin next. We'll put that in between Lady and the Tramp and Beauty and the Beast. Um, I don't really have a lot to say on this movie, um, I just... Something always just feels off to this about this movie for me, and honestly, Will Smith as the genie, um, not really his best walk. Let's put it that way. Anywho, let's we've got one more to go here, so let's finish this off. Last and then in last place we have Dumbo. Now this is the worst live-action remake with some incredibly distracting CGI and honestly I don't even really know who is the main character in this movie since we don't meet Dumbo until like the 30 minute mark and the children those two kids um completely forgettable can't even remember their names and I can say the same thing for the villain and that he's just a one-note, stereotypical, mustache villain of, boo, I want to make as much money off uh, Dumbo as I possibly can. So, anyway, that's why it's in last place. And that is all for today, everybody. That is my full ranking. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Also, you might want to check out uh, my Spider-Man PS4 video. I'm um, doing a walkthrough of that and part one is up now.